I'm Andy Howard, an Applications Engineer with Keysight ESOF EDA. In this brief video, I will demonstrate an ADS workspace that shows how to plot one tone swept power measured load pool data and use it with a modulated signal to calculate error vector magnitude, adjacent channel power ratio, and other data. The example assumes you have both amplitude and phase distortion in the measured load pool data file. A modulated signal amplified by such a nonlinearity will have both amplitude and phase distortion. The amplitude of the modulated signal can be increased by increasing its average power, which will result in an increasing degradation of the error vector magnitude and adjacent channel power ratio. Contours of constant EVM, ACPR, efficiency, output power, and bias current can be plotted. Also, because of the modulated input signal power sweep, the example includes plots of data versus power and interpolation of the data at a constant output power, a constant gain compression, and a constant error vector magnitude. This shows contours of output power and efficiency at a specified EVM level. It indicates for a particular modulated signal, the optimal reflection coefficient to maximize power or areas of the Smith chart where the output power is above some level while satisfying an EVM requirement. The following explains the idea behind this technique. As the load is pulled and the one-tone source power is swept, you get different output power and phase distortion curves like these, where the x-axis is the output power. This is a trajectory diagram of a modulated signal. As we move along the trajectory, the magnitude of the signal changes. If we apply this signal to the magnitude and phase nonlinearity of the measured device, we get amplitude and phase distortion. The trajectory diagram on the right is the ideal output trajectory you would get if there were no distortion. The green X is the distorted trajectory point, and the black X is the ideal point. The distance between these points is the instantaneous error vector. Where the magnitude of the input signal is low, we are way down on the magnitude and phase distortion curves, so there is virtually no distortion. However, where the magnitude of the input signal is high, we could be up on these curves where the distortion is significant. We compute the error vector magnitude by applying the time record of the modulated signal to the nonlinearity, computing the distorted output spectrum, and then using the distortion EVM algorithm to compute the EVM. This algorithm is discussed in various papers from Keysight measurement scientists. The ACPR is also computed from the distorted output spectrum. As I stated earlier, we scale up the amplitude of the input modulated signal so we get EVM and ACPR data as a function of average modulated input or output power. But we have to avoid setting the modulated input signal's power so high that it exceeds the input power range of the measured load pool data, which would lead to extrapolation. A small amount of extrapolation may be acceptable, however. There are several steps to using this technique. 1. Reading in the measured swept power load pool data into ADS and displaying it. 2. Generating or reading in a modulated signal and determining its peak to average power ratio. 3. Specifying several different parameters on the data display to carry out the calculations and display the results. This shows the gain in phase distortion curves from the measured load pool data file. This shows the trajectory diagram of a modulated signal. This was generated by a separate simulation, but could also come from a file with I and Q data versus time. Note that we are using a relatively short time record, only about 500 or 1,000 time points, to limit the calculation time required. Returning to the data display I showed earlier, let's go over the various parameters you can set. This is the modulated input signal. We have specified that only the first 1,001 time points be used in the calculations. If you want ACPR data, you need to specify the main and adjacent channel frequency limits as an offset from the carrier frequency. These need to be set based on the bandwidth of the modulated signal. These equations set the modulated input signal's power levels. In this case, we want the maximum average modulated input signal power level to be 10 dB below the maximum one-tone input signal power level of the measured load pool data. Setting this number lower would result in a higher average modulated input signal power level and increased likelihood of extrapolation during the calculations. The lower the desired EVM, the higher this value can be. The desired EVM dB marker sets the desired EVM. 
DVM versus main channel power data is interpolated at this value, resulting in the data at the red dots. The corresponding efficiency transducer power gain, ACPRs, and bias current are shown. Also, these data are used to calculate the contours. If we move the desired EVM dB marker to a different level, the plots and contours update. For a higher desired EVM, the output power and efficiency are also higher, but the ACPR is higher as well. Depending on the measured load pool data file and your EVM objectives, it may be that only a small part of the Smith chart near the optimum is all you want to look at. In this data display, you specify a circular region of the Smith chart and only loads within the circle are used in the calculations. This greatly speeds up the calculations. The circle is specified by Z center and radius variables. This data display is similar to the above, except that it interpolates the data and plots contours at a specified output power. Here we have specified a desired main channel output power of 34 dBm. The red contours are of constant EVM, while the output power is 34 dBm. If we specify a higher desired main channel power, the EVM contour levels increase or the area within which a desired EVM level is satisfied gets smaller. Also for this constant output power case, there's a data display that does the calculations and plots of data using only a subset of the data, again corresponding to reflection coefficients within a circle. The Generating Modulated Signals folder shows how to use a virtual test bench to generate a 5G test signal, as well as a statistically representative, much shorter version for use in subsequent calculations. This schematic generates a signal, but it could be more than a million time points, far too many for the above calculations. This schematic reads in the full time record of the signal and generates a much shorter, statistically representative version for subsequent calculations. Supported customers may download this example from the Keysight eSoft Knowledge Center. If you do not have ADS, please go to this page to request a free trial.